Well, good morning. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning to each of you. I am Minister John Pickens with Revelational Ministries, and I would like to thank all of you for joining me on this Sunday morning for the Word of God. Bless his holy name today. Amen. Uh, well, praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. The Bible says, let everything that had breath praise ye the Lord, for his praise shall continually continually be in our mouths today, for it is always a blessing, brothers and sisters, to be in and a part of the house of the Lord on this October 20th, 2024, on this Sunday morning. Bless his holy name today. Amen. There is always something for us, brothers and sisters, to be thankful for. There is always something for us to give God the glory, praise, and honor that he and only he so richly deserves. And when we learn to do this, he will come and make his home with us so that we can experience his fullness and his wholeness. Bless his holy name today. Before I go any further, let me always begin by first giving honor to God and my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for saving me from my sins and commissioning me to preach his word, which is the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ to his people all around the world. Bless his holy name today. Amen. Thank you to each of you uh, for logging in this morning. It is good to be here with you all uh, to have fellowship and companionship uh, as we join forces around the world, brothers and sisters, to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. He and only he is worthy to be praised. I know many of us are trying to get our 15 minutes of fame out here in society, uh, but we must realize that there is not a single creature. There is not a single creature on earth or anywhere else uh, that was made uh, that is breathing right now or is alive without him. Uh, without him, brothers and sisters, we are not even vapors or dust in this atmosphere. Uh, so isn't it right and only right to give him the praise and honor and glory that he deserves? Those of you who are suffering right now because of your mourning and you have lost a loved one and you are now in a stage of bereavement, we will continue to send our full condolences to you as you grieve through this time, just know that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is always with uh, with us. He is with you right now. You may not feel him uh, and it may not look as if uh, because of the things that are happening in your life. But make, most, make no mistake about it, brothers and sisters. Our Lord is always with us, even until the end of the time. Uh, for those of you who are suffering from healing or suffering from diseases and you are in the need of a healing, uh, we stand in agreement with you today this morning, right now, uh, that regardless of what the situation is, regardless of what the prognosis is, regardless of what the doctors have concluded, we know that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is still in the miracle working business, and he and he alone has the last say so. I know we are looking at lots of things happening in society, but understand this, brothers and sisters, none of us are leaving without his permission. That's the way it works. He and only he has the keys to life and to death. So thank you for joining me again, for giving him the praise, honor, and glory. Now, for those of you who have been sticking with us through the last few weeks, uh, we have been going through, brothers and sisters, this series in the book of Revelation. Particularly, we are in the sixth portion, the final portion of the seventh trumpet. Uh, so we are looking at all seven trumpets of the book of Revelation. Uh, we have started, brothers and sisters, by looking at the first trumpet. Uh, in fact, the first four trumpets. Um, also known as the four devastations, started with planetary destruction, unlike anything we've ever seen before. And then the fifth and sixth trumpets uh, are sort of supernatural in the sense that the bottomless pit has been opened and an army of demonic locusts have been unleashed from the bottomless pit. And then the sixth trumpet proceeds with 200 million men on horseback, uh, a 200 million man army uh, that has been given the power uh, to destroy brothers and sisters a large portion of the world during this time. Now, we need to know that this is taking place during the seven-year tribulation period that was prophesied in the book of Daniel. Now, we're, we enter the two interlude periods. Uh, the first interlude consisted of the seven thunders and the mystery of God. Uh, the mystery of God, brothers and sisters, one of them at least, is his plan for redemption for all of us. So even though we are divided across cultural lines, spiritual lines. We are divided across racial, racial lines. We must understand that in the end, none of that's going to matter. That our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, died for every single one of us. And part of his master plan, he has redeemed all of us. So he's going to bring all the nations and peoples, tribes and tongues back under his tutelage, back under brothers and sisters, his command in the end. 
The second interlude proceeded with the two witnesses. Uh, the two witnesses are the two olive oak trees, brothers and sisters, uh, that the Most High is going to send during this tribulatory period to prophesy to the people to change uh, because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And now we conclude today, brothers and sisters, with the seventh trumpet, the seventh trumpet of Revelation. So please turn with me in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 11. We're going to look at verse 15 through 19. That's the book of Revelation chapter 11. We're going to look at uh, verses 15 through 19. If you haven't um, listened to the other messages regarding the trumpets or the seven seals or the seven churches of Revelation, uh, I uh, implore you to go back. Go back to the video archives and watch those messages all in succession. It will begin to make a lot more sense as we continue to move forward. So I will go ahead and begin at verse 15. Then the seventh angel sounded and there were loud noises in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever. And the 24 elders who sat before God on their thrones, fell on their faces and worshiped God saying, we give you thanks, O Lord, God Almighty, the one who is and who was and is to come. Because you have taken your great power and reigned, the nations were angry and your wrath has come and the time of the dead that they should be judged and that you should reward your servants, the prophets and the saints and those who fear your name, small and great, and should destroy those who destroy the earth. Then the temple of God was opened in heaven, and the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple, and there were lightnings, noises, thunderings, an earthquake, and great hail. May the Lord bless both the hearers and doers of his word, that is Revelation chapter 11, verse 15 through 19, Amen. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you this morning, Heavenly Father, for life. Before we ask you for any other blessings, before we ask you for any other breakthroughs, we come before you this morning to humble ourselves, uh, to prostrate ourselves before your throne, to give you all glory and honor, because you and only you, Heavenly Father, are worthy and deserving of it, not us, Heavenly Father, uh, because it is you that created us, it is you that made us, it is you that sent your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, uh, to give his life for our sins. For no one took his life. He gave his life for every single one of us so that we could be a part of the mystery of God, which is your redemption, uh, your redemption plan for all of us so that we may all have an opportunity to inherit the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Brothers and sisters, thank you all again for joining me this morning for the word of God. Let us take our minds now off of everything and everyone and let us place it on Jesus Christ. Now, as you know, brothers and sisters, lots is always happening in our uh, environment. Lots is always happening in our neighborhoods, uh, our communities and our nation. Uh, for those who have been paying attention, this uh, the United States has been hit recently by a stream of very powerful hurricanes. Uh, the Middle East continues to be under siege by uh, the conflict between the nation of Israel and Iran and all the other uh, groups that are happening over there. Uh, there continues to be worldwide shortages of various types of resources, such as food, believe it or not. And on top of all of this, brothers and sisters, here in the United States, we are in a special season. We are in an election season. Yes, the election of 2024, brothers and sisters, is not just an election. It is a selection process. Now, regardless of how you vote or if you even want to vote, there is something deeper going on, brothers and sisters, besides liberalism versus conservatism. Uh, the topic of the day, as we get into the seven trumpet, brothers and sisters, deals with dominion. Uh, this is about power and control. Now, the Bible says here in verse 15 that the seventh angel sounded. And there were loud voices in heaven and the sounding or the sayings of the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. So we see a transfer taking place here, brothers and sisters, a transferring process of the title deed of earth is being transferred back to the Lord. Now, like you, I had a couple questions about this. Lord, if these were not your kingdoms from the beginning, Whose kingdoms were these? 
Uh, I was under the impression that he was always in control of all of these various things. But as many things in the Bible, when we read them, they're going to confuse us. So this is unlike any other book that we're going to read. If you ever try to read the book War and Peace, uh, it's, it's very, very long. Uh, you probably had to, brothers and sisters, go get different types of interpretation devices. But did you have to pray to understand War and Peace? Uh, did you have to pray to understand or to read your most favorite novel? More than likely not. Well, this book, brothers and sisters, you're going to have to pray for understanding because many of the things we read are not going to make sense. And this was one of them. So I had to do deep thought, brothers and sisters, deep meditation and research. Lord, why is the title being passed back to you? I thought you always had the baton. I thought you were always controlling all of these sorts of things. As always, when you pray, brothers and sisters, he reveals things to you in his timing. And over the course of time, he showed me in his word, brothers and sisters, that yes, he is all sovereign. He is all powerful. He, brothers and sisters, is the master of all creation because he designed it. However, he has, brothers and sisters, as we're going to see, uh, an owner of a house will pass the ownership to someone else for a time. Turn with me, brothers and sisters, to the book of Genesis. Turn with me to the book of Genesis chapter one. We're going to look at chapter one. We're going to start at verse 26. Now, as I always mention, sometimes in order to understand the ending, we have to first start uh, at the beginning. So Genesis chapter one, verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Too many of us, brothers and sisters, are upset that we don't look like someone else. Now, too many of us are upset that we don't look like something that we see on television. We're not made to be satisfactory in the eyes of each other. We are made in his image and likeness. Then he says, let them have dominion. Let them, he's referring to mankind, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. How many of you realize that at the beginning of time, the Lord gave mankind all of the dominion in the earth, brothers and sisters, over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all of this earth. Now, I know you're saying, well, Brother John, Revelations 15, uh, Revelations 11 and 15 says now the title deed is going to be passed back to the Lord. So, yes, he originally gave it to us. Very true. But something took place, brothers and sisters. Something took place in the garden uh, that relinquished mankind of their full control of what they originally had at the beginning. So let's read on. So verse 27 says, so God made man in his own image and in the image of God, he created them, male and female. There is too much war and bickering, brothers and sisters, between men and women over who is the most important, over who is the most vital to the relationship. Brothers and sisters, we are both made in his image. Uh, let us not be like Cain slaughtering his brother Abel because his offering uh, wasn't properly received. Uh, let us not be like some of the others, brothers and sisters, who were fighting because they were jealous of something that someone else had. He created us both. He created every single race and nation of people on this planet to include all of their languages, all of their customs, all of their cultures. Part of his master plan is to bring everyone back to that realization that he is in control, not the men, not the women, not any other particular culture of people. He is the ultimate sovereign power. Now he says here, brothers and sisters, he created them. Then he blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves. Brothers and sisters, the Lord gave dominion to us. Originally, his plan was to have Adam and Eve, brothers and sisters, rule in the Garden of Eden. Uh, they were not going to have all the power over the earth. No, dominion, brothers and sisters, is the Hebrew word or the Hebrew interpretation it says mamlika. Mamlika means to rule or to reign. It implies the idea of having a kingdom, meaning Dominion refers to sovereignty over a territory, over domain, or, or a domain. It does not mean that you are the creators of it. Many people will say, well, if he gave us power over the dominion of the fish of the sea, why can't we control the oceans? He maintains, brothers and sisters, the original power over creation. We don't have control over the waves. 
but we had control over the fish. We had control over the birds of the air and over the cattle of this earth. Uh, now, the word kingdom, brothers and sisters, the Greek word for kingdom means baselia. Baselia means royal power, status, reign, palace, or princess, uh, obviously king or prince. It also is used to describe a kingdom which includes all of creation. So the Lord, brothers and sisters, gave Baselia. He gave Baselia dominion over to Adam and Eve, which means he said, look, I created this planet. I'm going to go ahead and give you temporary power. I want you to have this temporary domain here to rule over the creatures of the earth. Now, for those of you who are familiar with property law, all of us should be in a sense because you're either a homeowner or a renter. Uh, and under the laws, pretty much in every single jurisdiction, the homeowner, brothers and sisters, has the original title deed. However, uh, the owner will lease this premises out. The, the homeowner will lease uh, out, brothers and sisters, uh, the power of possession over to someone called a tenant or a leasee. Uh, the leasee, brothers and sisters, has temporary power and domain on that particular premise. Now, the contract uh, that the owner will create uh, with the leasee uh, has some sort of requirements uh, and specifications, a, a list of things that they should do and then a list of things that they should not do. Uh, and all of the things that they can and cannot do, it may consist of you're not supposed to paint the house. Uh, you're not supposed to do this to the yard or to the foundation of the building. For those who live in HOAs, homeowner associations, they see this all the time. Now, what takes place in that contract, there is probably the most important clause in there. If you haven't read this in your lease, I would recommend doing that, particularly for those who rent, not necessarily for those who own the home. Uh, there's something called a sublease clause or a subletting clause. And it essentially says, these are the things you're not supposed to do, but the most important thing that you cannot do without the own permission of the owner is to sublease your property out to someone else. You are not allowed to have a subleaser, meaning someone else comes into your home, you in turn rent the property out to them. Uh, because in doing so, you are giving away some of your ownership. Uh, some of you may not realize there is a law on the books, essentially in every jurisdiction. It's not always enforced, but it is still a law on the books for adverse possession. Adverse possession allows a person to come into your home, uh, typically called a squatter. If they stay in your premises for a period of seven years, then they can actually, and you know about them, essentially meaning you let them in and they stay on your premises for a time of seven years then they can have a claim for the whole ownership of the entire premises. Now, this is a very important law many of you should check out. Now, the question that we have to ask is, what took place with our dominion here on earth? So the Lord subleased out, brothers and sisters, he leased out the premises to Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, uh, basically representing all of us, we had dominion and control as the Lord sees fit. Turn with me just one page to chapter three. We're going to switch over to one page to chapter three, and we're going to see what took place with our dominion. So chapter three, verse 16. Now, we know at this point, Adam and Eve, brothers and sisters, were deceived by the serpent. Uh, the serpent essentially into the garden, hung around the tree long enough to first deceive Eve and then Adam. Once Adam, brothers and sisters, ate of the fruit, then the curse came upon the earth. Now, the Bible says here at verse 16, to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain, you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam, he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil, you shall eat of it. So many people, brothers and sisters, when they read this, they immediately stop right there at verse 16 and verse 17, and both genders start pointing the fingers at each other saying, see, it was the woman's fault, or the woman saying, see, it was the man's fault for not watching over the woman and uh, paying attention to her. You get into all of these debates, but there's another portion here that is skipped over, and this explains, brothers and sisters, why the Lord is going to take back possession over everything down here on earth. Cursed is the ground for your sake. Many people don't realize that right now there is a curse that has been placed on the entire earth. Uh, not brothers and sisters, the one that you think. Have you ever wondered why you started a business 
and it didn't succeed. And you wondered to yourself, didn't the Lord give us dominion over the, the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air? Why is it that when I try to go take another college class and I don't seem to have dominion over these college exams, I, I don't seem to have dominion when it comes to starting my businesses. Most businesses, 90% of all small businesses fail. Why is that? Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil, you shall eat of it. Why, Brother John, is it so difficult to just get on my feet, to keep a job? Why am I always getting laid off? Why are all my relationships not working out? All the days of your life, both thorns and thistles, it shall bring forth for you. Brothers and sisters, Adam and Eve were created in paradise. Uh, the Lord blessed them, first of all, with immortal bodies. Uh, that he gave them companionship. Adam had a wife. Eve had a husband. Uh, they had a job to do. They were to name and to have dominion over all of the animals and everything that was on earth. After everything that was given to them, brothers and sisters, what did they do? They subleased their dominion out to someone else. They subleased their dominion out to the enemy. Why? Because they were tempted and they failed. Now, many of you trying to understand, well, Brother John, I don't understand the connection between this and what's going on in Revelation, where the Lord is taking back dominion. Well, turn with me, brothers and sisters, to the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, you will find these words. The devil is now the God of this world. The book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2 says, the devil is the prince of the air. Well, hold on a second. I thought we just read here in Genesis 26. I know we just read it where it says that God gave mankind dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air. So how can it now mean uh, that the devil is now the prince of the air? Well, that's not all it says. John chapter 12, verse 31 says the devil is now the ruler of this world. So how did the devil, brothers and sisters, become a ruler of this world? Why? Because of mankind. When, brothers and sisters, we fall, and the Bible says we have all fallen, just like Adam and Eve, so we don't have to simply point fingers at them or King David or Samson or anybody else. We have to look at ourselves. Whenever we are tempted or we fall, violating a commandment that the Lord has given us, we sublease out a little bit more of our dominion. We sublease out a little bit more of control in our life. Uh, and if you don't believe me, brothers and sisters, look at the school systems. Look at our communities. Does it appear to you that our schools are being ran by the Most High? Uh, look at our homes, brothers and sisters. Look at our relationships, our business ships, our accounts. Look at the economy today. Uh, does it appear to you that we have full dominion and control? Now, some people will say, well, we still have some version. And that is true. All of the dominion, brothers and sisters, was not stripped away. So this is why as mankind, as people, we can still go into the forest and control the environment. We can still control lots of things that happens here. But we don't control everything. Because the Bible says very clearly, the devil is now the prince of the air. Uh, the devil is now the god of this world. And because he has been operating, brothers and sisters, alongside of us, because we have allowed him to, we have subleased out, brothers and sisters, our premises to the enemy. And like any squatter, he has claimed, tried to claim, uh, claim brothers and sisters, possession of that property. So now, instead of being a full tenant on our own, we are now tenants in common here with the enemy. The enemy, brothers and sisters, has allowed himself, uh, and we have allowed him, to essentially take up residency in an area where we have had, or supposedly have had, total dominion. Now, how, brothers and sisters, did we get to this point? We got to this point, as we just read in Genesis, but Jesus is now going to show us, brothers and sisters, just how you maintain power and control in your own dominion. Please turn with me to the book of Matthew. We're going to go to, to the book of Matthew, chapter 4, and we're going to look at verses 1. We're going to start at verse 1. So Matthew, chapter 4, we're going to start at verse 1. Now, I want you to compare and contrast. We're going to use as an example, compare Adam and Eve to Christ. We're going to compare what they had to what he had and what he was able to do in the end. So first, Adam and Eve, brothers and sisters, were married. They had, brothers and sisters, companionship. They had paradise. They had everything that you could ever want. Uh, there was no violence in the Garden of Eden. Uh, biblical scripture suggests that there was no killing in the Garden of Eden prior to the fall. In other words, 
it mirrors us of the new millennial kingdom that Christ is going to have down here. The animals were not killing each other. Anything that was in the garden they needed to eat more than likely ate fruit. E either way, they had everything that you could want. Now contrast the second Adam, which is Jesus Christ, to the first Adam. Jesus came, brothers and sisters, as a single man. He didn't have a relationship with anybody. His bride is going to be the church. Uh, he was not born in riches and wealth as Adam and Eve could comparatively have been born into. Uh, he was born, brothers and sisters, in a manger amongst all the animals. Uh, he didn't have all of these various food to eat. In fact, the Bible says Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights afterwards, he was hungry. So on top of all of this, brothers and sisters, uh, he fasted. Nowhere in scripture does it suggest Adam and Eve fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And when they finally saw that fruit on the tree, they couldn't help themselves and they were just hungry. They had to have something to eat. No, brothers and sisters, uh, they had it all and they wasted it all. Well, Jesus is going to show us, even if you don't have everything, you can still, brothers and sisters, achieve. Now, when the tempter came to him, when the tempter came, he said, if you are the son of God, remember, the enemy, brothers and sisters, is always going to try to wait till you're at your most vulnerable state. For those of you who watch National Geographic or perhaps you watch uh, animal nature shows, uh, watch them from time to time. Watch how the predators, the predators will rarely go after the strongest animal. They will rarely go after uh, whether the alpha male or the alpha female. They will typically go after brothers and sisters, the weakest one in the group, the one that seems to be sick, the one that always seems to be tired, the one that's hungry. Well, the enemy is going to wait until Jesus is at his most vulnerable state because he came, yes, in the body of a man. And then he questions him. He says, if you are the son of God. Command that these stones become bread. So the enemy, brothers and sisters, the Bible says, comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. He was very successful at stealing Adam and Eve's dominion. He was very successful, brothers and sisters, at stealing Cain, at stealing Esau, or I should say Esau gave up his own dominion. He was very successful at stealing a bit of authority from King David, uh, from uh, uh, not just, um, excuse me, Samson and others. Now he's going to try to do this with the Son of God, as he is constantly trying to do to all of us. Now, many people will say, well, Brother John, there is nothing suggesting that Jesus was given an explicit command not to eat food. Uh, why was eating food to be a sin? Well, eating food, brothers and sisters, is not a sin. But Jesus Christ is on a fast. And anyone that knows anything about fasting, you can fast from anything. You can fast from television, social media, whatever it is. But when you are on a food fast, brothers and sisters, the whole point is to get close to the Father, to the Most High. So eating right now would be a violation of the fast. So this is where the enemy is going to come. He's going to tempt the Lord in his flesh. Why? Because that's what he's been doing for us since the beginning. And he consistently does it. Uh, how many of you have ever gone to a football game, a basketball game uh, or a concert? And the people with the concessions are always coming around offering you different types of food. Sometimes they're offering you water, Gatorade, different types of popcorn, different types of snacks. If you are looking, let's say you want popcorn. If they don't have butter popcorn, they're going to have caramel. Maybe they have plain. Maybe they'll offer you extra butter. Whatever it is, they have they have something for everyone. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in business. The enemy, brothers and sisters, studies us. Uh, criminal statistics suggest that the average criminal online studies all of us for at least eight hours a day before they decide to hack into your account. Uh, they're not just going to just randomly hack into someone's account. The, uh, the statistics show that they study an average of eight hours a day, brothers and sisters. Now, those are human criminals. Can you imagine what the enemy does to all of us? He is studying us 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week, uh, 12 months out of the year. He is studying us, brothers and sisters. He is studying us and he wants to find out just what our weak point is. And here he is pouncing. So then Jesus answered and said unto him, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Now, the enemy loves to be an expert of the Old Testament. How many of you who may be single right now, uh, how many people have come and tried to tell you, uh, well, the Bible says it's not good for man to be alone. So go out there and just get you someone. Well, brothers and sisters, Jesus uh, counters this. He doesn't go blow for blow with the enemy. He is countering the enemy with the full weight of the word of God. He says, man shall not live by bread alone. How many of you are in relationships or even married? 
and people have came and told you, are you happy in your relationship? You may not be. And then they're going to probably tell you, well, God didn't create you to be in an unhappy situation. He didn't want his people to be bondage down. People are always, brothers and sisters, using the tactics of the enemy to get us, brothers and sisters, to go against what the Lord Jesus Christ has in store for us. And then it says that the devil took him up on into the holy city, set him up on the pinnacle of the temple and said, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written. He shall give his angels charge over you in their hands. They shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against the stone. So now he's going to start really quoting scripture. Anyone familiar with this passage knows this is directly from the 91 Psalms, brothers and sisters. So the enemy is going to start quoting. He always loves to quote lots of Old Testaments. It's not good for you to be alone. Uh, the Lord is going to catch you. Live your 20s and 30s the way you want to. And don't worry about it. The Lord is going to save you. He's going to keep you from all hurt, harm, and danger. Brothers and sisters, that's not what the word of God says. He does not tell us live our truth, uh, which you can do. Nobody's stopping you from living the way you want to live. But he wants us to know, brothers and sisters, we can't expect him to run to the rescue for every decision and thing that we do. That's not how this operates. Now, this is what Jesus says. Jesus says to him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Brothers and sisters, we don't tell the most high what to do. When does the creation dictate to the creator how reality should be run? If any of you want his job, brothers and sisters, uh, we have to first look at his house, look at our household. Are you able to control the people in your workplace? Can you control the people in your own household? Many of you have pets. Can you control your own pets? If you can't, then you certainly can't do his job. Can you run and control every single angelic beast in him? all of the various angels and archangels and all of their thoughts process. Uh, can you run hell? Can you run hell and all the demons that are down there, brothers and sisters? Can you control the earth and all of the various forms and cultures of people that are here? Uh, can you heal everyone? Uh, are you in control of 9 billion of our bodies? Can you wake us up in the morning? Since we can't do that, brothers and sisters, he wants us to know he is in charge and we don't tempt him. We don't get to tell him what to do Lord, I'm in my 20s. I want to live my truth, do what I want to do. And I know just as my grandmother used to tell us, you're going to catch us in the end. That's not what it says, brothers and sisters. But the enemy is not going to uh, be defeated quite yet. So he's going to try a third time. Again, the devil took him high up, took him on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to them, and he said to him, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Now, in today's translation, brothers and sisters, uh, the enemy is not going to take you to Mount Everest to do this. He's going to have you open up your cell phone every morning. Uh, this is why it's dangerous for us. The first thing you do every morning is you jump to social media. Uh, you're in your most vulnerable state spiritually early in the morning. And when you jump on social media and you see one of your new friends just got into a new relationship, they're happy. They're in the Bahamas. They're having a good time. Or you jump on social media and you see all the name brand clothing, all the Prada and Coach and Louis Vuitton, all the French and Italian brands that you don't have that you love. Or you jump on social media and you see all the cars of the world, those who are into international affairs. You're looking at all of the various countries. You're looking at the political leaders. You're seeing people of all stripes and genders take power, control. They're graduating with their doctorate degrees. The enemy is doing the same thing with us. He is showing us all the kingdoms of this world every day. And this is what he says. All of these things have been given to him and their glory. And it is up to him to give it to whom he desires. Brothers and sisters, as we know, the enemy is going to lie. The Bible says he is the father of all lies. Is there a tad of truth into something what he's saying to a degree? He does have some control, brothers and sisters. Remember, the Bible says he is the prince of the air. Uh, the Bible refers to him over and over again as the ruler of this world. Why? Because we have subleased out our dominion starting in the Garden of Eden. But he does not have all power and control. That's what he wants us to believe. He wants us to believe, brothers and sisters, that he has all the power and control down here. He does not. And look what he tells Jesus. All these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. How many times in your career have you been... Uh, uh, basically, thrust with a position. Do you follow the commandment of the Most High to rule ethically, 
or go unethically uh, and basically try to obtain everything that that particular career has to offer. Well, brothers and sisters, the enemy is still using the same old tricks that he used in the Garden of Eden. And that Jesus says, brothers and sisters, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. We have to understand what Jesus is doing here. Jesus is not going scripture for scripture with the enemy. Jesus is repudiating the enemy by telling him what thus says the Lord our God. Uh, many of us think that this is a boxing match, uh, that when the enemy throws a scripture at you, then you throw another scripture back. It doesn't work that way, brothers and sisters. When you repel, when we counter, we have to counter with thus says the Lord, uh, because the enemy is always going to have another scripture for you. Well, go ahead and take this money, because the Bible says money answereth all things. Go ahead and start this uh, take this money. It's good for your ministry. You can take this money, this loan uh, for your ministry, and it's going to help you feed the poor. The enemy is good at what he does, brothers and sisters, but we have to counter and, and acknowledge that we serve an all-powerful, the all-powerful sovereign God. Uh, we cannot believe, brothers and sisters, that the Most High is in control, that he is omnipotent, but somehow he has forgotten that you are lonely. Somehow he has forgotten uh, that you need food that you need a good job, that you need a career, that you are having a trouble uh, relationship right now with your spouse. He knows all of these things. What he doesn't want us to do is listen to the enemy. Uh, the enemy has nothing to offer you, brothers and sisters. He has nothing to offer us. Uh, the Bible says he has come to kill, steal, and to destroy. He stole dominion, brothers and sisters, from Adam and Eve. He stole dominion from countless others from the beginning of time. This is how he gains power and territory here on earth. Uh, but the Bible says, brothers and sisters, in Revelation eleven fifteen, when the seventh trumpet blows, the full title deed is now going to be returned back to the Most High and of Christ, the Messiah. So what that means is, brothers and sisters, an eviction process is going to take place. Uh, the Lord is going to show not only the enemy, he's going to show us. I have allowed y'all, mankind and the enemy, I have allowed y'all to rule down here. Uh, mankind, you have forfeited your dominion multiple times to the enemy. And the enemy knows his time is short anyway. So the Lord is going to say, now I'm going to show you how you actually rule. And when the seventh trumpet blows, brothers and sisters, he is going to call the loan. He is going to call the tenants, the tenants back to him. He is going to relinquish the title deed from mankind and from the devil. He is going to take it all back to him and give it to Jesus Christ. Turn with me, brothers and sisters, to the book of Matthew. We're going to go here to chapter 28. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 28. We're going to look at a very important verse here. Let's see what we have here. Okay, so now Jesus here, brothers and sisters, has already uh, concluded uh, his earthly ministry. Uh, he has been crucified and he has risen from the grave. And now he, before his ascension, he is communicating various principles to the disciples on what they are supposed to do when he leaves. But this is what he tells them in verse 18, chapter 28. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So the title deed, brothers and sisters, has not transferred yet until revelation takes place. But Jesus is giving us a sneak peek. He says, by the way, I'm in control now. I have all the power on earth and in heaven because it was given to me. Jesus, brothers and sisters, started his ministry out uh, there uh, being tempted by the enemy. But because of his faithfulness to what the father has said, brothers and sisters, now he is ruler over many things. The Bible says in Matthew 25, 21, his Lord said unto him, well done, my good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, and I will make you a ruler over many. Jesus lays the, blu uh, the blueprint for us. If brothers and sisters, we resist, and the Bible says we have all fallen before, but the Lord wants us to know if, brothers and sisters, we can keep uh, dominion over small things, he will make us a ruler over many things. So what does this have to do, brothers and sisters, with chapter 15 or chapter 11? Chapter 11 is the transferring process. Now we are approximately 3.5 years into the tribulation period. So this is the exact halfway point. And the Lord wants us to know when that takes place, all of the power and control and dominion that mankind has had uh, and that the, the enemy has had, the devil, all of that's going to be relinquished back to him. Many of us are still in the Old Testament in a sense that we're trying to have dominion. I've heard too many people say, well, we need to be conquering the earth. 
Uh, we need to have dominion over the earth. We need to buy all the businesses, buy all the land. We, we don't have dominion like we're supposed to have. Uh, brothers and sisters, we've already used up uh, those nine lives, so to speak. Uh, that time and period is gone. Uh, many people are still uh, basically rereading uh, the text incorrectly, believing that it's still our destiny to gain dominion and control over the earth. No, it's not, brothers and sisters. We have already forfeited that. Jesus tells us right here, he has all authority in heaven has been given to him, not to us. We have forfeited that opportunity. Now we are going to be his servants. We're going to be his priestly servants. He says in the order of Melchizedek, meaning that we're going to be both king and priest. Uh, we're going to be both rulers and servants to him, brothers and sisters, meaning that the first Adam forfeited his uh, rulership. Now it has passed to the second Adam and he did not forfeit. So now we fall under the division of Jesus Christ. Now, the next portion that we're going to deal with, brothers and sisters, here in Revelation 11, deals with the 24 elders. So verse 16 says, and the 24 elders who sat before God on their thrones fell on their faces and worshiped God saying, we give thanks to you, O God, the one who is and who was and who was to come, because you have taken your great power and reigned. The nations were angry and your wrath has come and the time of the dead that they should be judged and that you should reward your servants and the prophets and the saints and those who fear your name, small and great, and should destroy those who destroy the earth. Now, you do not have to be an environmental activist, brothers and sisters. Uh, but the Bible says there is going to be a time that those who destroy the earth, as you just read, because the earth is a part of the package of dominion that was passed down to Adam and Eve. And to the people who are destroying not just the earth, but all of the inhabitants, they're going to pay a price for these things in the end. So now many people will say, well, Brother John, I thought that there was a curse over the earth, but Jesus lifted that curse when he was on the cross. Well, brothers and sisters, yes and no. The, the portion of the curse that he lifted was on us. So we have been covered, brothers and sisters, bought and purchased with the blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. But the rest of the earth is not yet redeemed. If you believe the earth is redeemed and under the titleship of the Most High, have you turned on the news lately? Uh, do you see what's happening in the streets, brothers and sisters? Do you see what's happening in the communities, in our homes, in the school systems? Uh, many people, brothers and sisters, are arguing over prayer in the schools. Well, to me, I'd much rather, have, uh, much rather have a few people upset that you're praying in school versus what we have now, which is violence, brothers and sisters, mass shootings and violence in the schools. We subleased out our school system, brothers and sisters, to the enemy. And the enemy, like any squatter, is going to come in and claim possession. We have subleased out, brothers and sisters, our homes. We sublease out oftentimes our bodies when the reality is our bodies have been purchased and paid for by Christ Jesus. Now, Revelation 15, 11 and 15 is very important because it's saying now the redemption of the earth is going to be done. So we, he has already done uh, us, brothers and sisters. He has already redeemed us. But the earth is now going to pull fat, uh, pass full titleship back to him. Now the 24 elders, who are these 24 elders? We keep seeing them appear from time to time. We first saw them, brothers and sisters, uh, in the early books of uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 4. We saw them in chapter 5. And here we now see them again in chapter 11. Now there's lots of speculation as to who the 24 elders are. Some believe that they're an, uh, angels or heavenly hosts. Um, others believe that they're uh, symbols. They're just symbols uh, of people. Uh, others believe there are the ancient patriarchs going all the way back to Adam, to Abraham, to Noah, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Many believe they could be the 12 tribes of Israel along with the 12 apostles. But if you turn with me, brothers and sisters, to uh, the first Chronicles, the book of first Chronicles, chapter 24, uh, you're going to see something called the division of the priests. Now, here King David is in charge at this point, brothers and sisters, and he is on the tail end of his life. So he has lived his life being a ferocious warrior for the Most High. Uh, he has had his personal failings in his personal life, and he has paid those prices. His entire household essentially fell into shambles. Well, now he is at the tail end of his life. Now, as an older man, he is not enjoying all of the pleasures of the world as he may once did at one point. Now he's dedicating the remainder of his life to the house of God. Many people try to wonder, well, why is it that when people get older, they want to go to church all the time? Why do when people get older, uh, they want to go ahead and start donating money to the Lord? Well, brothers and sisters, we are returning 
As we age, we are returning closer and closer to our point of origin, which is the most high. He says very clearly in the book of Genesis, brothers and sisters, out of the ground and the dust we are, and to the dust we shall return. So King David, being well aware of this, he is dedicating his entire life to the house of God. Now, his son Solomon is going to build a temple. But David, brothers and sisters, has already stored up the money. He has stored up the resources, including the priests. So he divides the priests into 24 divisions. 24, uh, 1 Chronicles 20, chapter 24, and verse 1 says, Now these are the divisions of the sons of Aaron. The sons of Aaron were uh, Nahabud, Abihu, Elizer, and Itamar. And Nahub and Abihu died before their father and had no children. Therefore, Elizer and Itamar ministered as priests. Then David with Zadok, the sons of Elizer and Amimelech of the sons of Itamar, divided them according to the schedule of their service. Now, if you look through verses 7 through 19, we're not going to go through all of the names, but you're going to see a list of 24 priests uh, that were essentially divided. This is called the Levitical priesthood. It was their jobs, brothers and sisters, to administer all the offerings, all the sacrifices in the temple. Of note, brothers and sisters, is the eighth division. The eighth division is Abayu. Abayu in the book of Luke, brothers and sisters, is the division in which Zacharias, which is John the Baptist's father, came from. So this Levitical priesthood came all the way from the Old Testament to the New Testament. In fact, uh, the Jewish Temple Institute, which is still in power today, brothers and sisters, still maintains a form of this where they rotate individuals. Now, the third temple is not built yet designed, or it's designed, but it's not yet uh, complete. But they still maintain, brothers and sisters, many of these old traditions. So many people believe that these are the 24 elders. In other words, a rotation of sorts of people that are going to be bound down before the throne. Now, again, we don't completely know that. But what we do know, brothers and sisters, that the Bible says here uh, that there was a priest and king named Melchizedek. Uh, Melchizedek, brothers and sisters, is known as uh, the order of Melchizedek is known as a king and both a priest. He's going to be the first of a line of a new line of priesthood in which we all fall under. Uh, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter seven, we now are a part of the royal priesthood under the order of Melchizedek. Why? Because of Christ Jesus. Now, we don't have any mother or father on record of Melchizedek. Melchizedek mentioned in the book of Genesis uh, was a king and priest, the king of Salem. Abraham paid a tithe to him. He's known as the first priest as actually mentioned. Now, brothers and sisters, fast forward to Jesus Christ. We know Jesus Christ is the final uh, and high priest because he is not only king, uh, he is not only servant of the Most High, uh, but he is also, brothers, the sacrifice. So he is the sacrifice. He sacrificed himself for all of us. So when he ascended to heaven, brothers and sisters, he became uh, the ultimate sacrifice for all of us and to reign as king. Now, because of him, we don't fall under the Levitical priesthood. This is why many people are debating who belongs to what tribe. That is obsolete now, brothers and sisters. We now fall under the new order, the order of Jesus Christ. And he, brothers and sisters, is about every tribe, tongue, people, and nation. Turn with me to Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5 actually tells us where the elders actually come from, believe it or not. So this mystery, many mysteries people are debating, the word of God already tells us. So chapter 5, verse 8. Now here, brothers and sisters, the Bible says, Now when he had taken the scroll, this is the lamb, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp, a golden bowl full of incense. Incense represents the prayers of the people, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seal, for you were slain. And have redeemed us to God by your blood. So the elders, brothers and sisters, these aren't angels. These are redeemed individuals out of every tribe, tongue, people, and nation. And have made us kings and priests. Remember, the order of Melchizedek is both king and priest. Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters, both king and priest. We, because we fall under his order, brothers and sisters, are both rulership and servitude. A priest serves the most high. Many people don't understand that. Well, I have a big title. Uh, I'm the biggest person here on my job. I have a doctorate degree. I have this and that. It doesn't matter. We are still servants, brothers and sisters, under the most high. And it says, and we shall reign on the earth. So these elders, brothers and sisters, these are rulers, uh, but they're also priests. They are also servants. 
And if we were caught up on race, since many people are, the Bible says they are of every tribe, tongue, people, and nation. So these are redeemed individuals, brothers and sisters, bowing before the throne, the 24 elders. Uh, this should put to bed, brothers and sisters, the superiority arguments that we have here, here on earth. But we haven't done that because many people, brothers and sisters, are not following the commandments of the Most High. They're following their own truth. They're trying to make the world in their image. They're trying to have dominion over a planet in which dominion was already stripped. Uh, the Bible says the enemy is the ruler of this world. But yet we are still competing for resources. We're still competing for foolish things. Now, what's the third portion that we need to know from this chapter from the seventh trumpet? Verse 19, then the temple of God was opened in heaven. I believe that he put this here, brothers and sisters. He wanted us to know that what he is looking at now is not the temple on earth. There is going to be a third temple. But what John saw in his vision was the temple of God in heaven. Now, we need to know uh, that the replica, the tabernacle that was built down here on earth to include the two temples were mirror images of the temple in heaven. Uh, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 5, that the tabernacle is a copy of the temple of God in heaven. This is why the Lord wanted Moses to build it with specificity. He wanted him to see this is how the temple in heaven is built and designed. Uh, but that temple was built with man's hands. The one down here on earth is built with man's hands. He wants us to understand his temple is not built by us. His temple, brothers and sisters, is built by himself. Now it says the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple. And there were lightnings, noises, thunderings, earthquake, and great hail. Why is all of this noise happening around the seventh trumpet, brothers and sisters? Why is this so climatic? Why is this such a big deal that all of this is happening that causes the temple of God to open up into heaven? Well, if you look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18, the Bible says, at the sounding of the last trumpet. Now, some don't interpret the seventh trumpet to be the last trumpet. They have a different interpretation on it. Um, that's fine if that's uh, what they want to do. But we're going to go with what's actually written here. The seventh trumpet, brothers and sisters, says, uh, the Bible says, at the sounding of the last trumpet, we shall all be changed at the twinkling of an eye. So this is one of the rapture points, brothers and sisters, that many believe in the mid-tribulation view because we are halfway through the seven-year tribulatory period. Now, many believe in the pre-tribulation view, which means the church is going to be long gone before any of this happens. Others believe, no, this is when the church is going to be raptured at the sounding of the seventh trumpet. And then there are others who say, no, we're not going to be raptured until the very end of the whole thing. Regardless of the view, what we see happening here is something climatic, brothers and sisters. Something magnificent is happening that is causing the temple of God to open up and to all of this rejoicing to now have to take place. Now we are officially, brothers and sisters, halfway through the tribulatory period. So this is 3.5 years. Now the next uh, three and a half years that's going to take place is going to be known as the Great Tribulation. And we are going to start this. Now, something else we need to know about the seventh trumpet. The seventh trumpet, brothers and sisters, is not the end. This is not all there is to the seventh trumpet. The Bible from here, from chapters 12, brothers and sisters, to chapters 18, for all intents and purposes, and 19, where the seven, and even beyond, involves the seventh trumpet as well. So now we're going to go through a period of interludes, a very important information that's going to be taking place while the seventh trumpet is sounding. Uh, many have interpreted this to mean that when the seventh trumpet blows, it's going to be the longest of the seven. It's going to, as it's blowing, rulership. Ownership and dominion, all is being returned back to the Lord, brothers and sisters. And while the seventh trumpet is uh, blowing, all of these things are taking place. Now, many people are still confused on the concept of God taking back control when they thought that he was in control the whole time. Brothers and sisters, God Almighty is all sovereign. He is all powerful. He is always in control. But he is not controlling every single thing that we do. Uh, to believe that, uh, but to believe that he is always a micromanaging God, that means that we don't have free will. And we know that's not true, uh, because if you don't have free will, how can you be held accountable for anything when you're not in control of anything? So we do have free will. Uh, we have free will to eat the fruit of the forbidden tree. Uh, we have free will, brothers and sisters, to inflict pain and violence on one another, to inflict racial superiority, uh, to inflict gender superiority. Uh, we have free will, brothers and sisters, to kill, steal, and to destroy. But the Lord wants us to know, because we have exercised our free will in a not-so-good way, we have caused our own dominion. 
We have caused our own territory, uh, our own areas, brothers and sisters, to be subleased out to the devil. And the Bible says he now is the ruler and the prince of the air. Um, because he is, brothers and sisters, and because we have let him, the Lord is going to, at the blowing of the seventh trumpet, he's going to basically tell us all, I'm going to take back over now. I will let y'all, I will let allow y'all to essentially run things how y'all want it to a degree. But now I'm going to show you how true rulership is going to take place. And he is not going to give that rulership, brothers and sisters, to anybody else except, he says, and of his Christ. Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters, is going to be a man, the ruler down here. All the authority in heaven and earth was already given to him. But now he is going to exercise it. Now he is going to exercise it down here on earth at the sounding of the blowing of the seven trumpet. It is a process that is going to continue uh, to remove the curse on the physical earth. Bless his holy name today. If you are here this morning and you have any doubts whatsoever, uh, you were here this morning and you were wondering why everything in your life seems to crumble, even though you were told that you had full dominion and control over every single thing that's happening to you. Uh, you were told that, yes, mankind had dominion over the fish of the sea. Uh, we had dominion over the birds of the air, the cattle on the grass, but somehow there is no cattle for you. Uh, you go into your barn, there is nothing in there. You try to open up businesses, there is nothing there. Nothing, everything that you do seems to fall. In fact, you look at mankind, today our state, uh, does it appear that we truly have dominion? We don't, uh, because we have subleased it out. Well, brothers and sisters, I'm not going to tell you uh, that every single thing that you lost is going to be returned to you overnight. No, but what I can tell you is we now can get up under the new order. We can get up under the one who does have true power and all power and control and authority. And we can get under his leadership, brothers and sisters, and begin the process of stopping to allow the enemy to steal everything that we have. And if you desire to have that, all you need to do is to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the son of God. If you truly believe that, not just say it, Today begins the new day and moment of your relationship with Christ Jesus. In the process of this relationship, he is going to take us to places, brothers and sisters, some places we may not want to go, other places we've never dreamed you could go. If, brothers and sisters, we learn not to allow the enemy to strip our dominion from us, uh, not to allow the enemy, brothers and sisters, to trick us, to fool us, uh, that yes, I deserve to have this and I deserve to have that. Any provision that is worth having that is going to last the test of time comes from the most high. Anything else, brothers and sisters, passes away. The dominion that the enemy has is temporary down here on earth. The dominion that Adam and Eve had was temporary. His dominion, brothers and sisters, the dominion of Jesus Christ remains forevermore. Don't you want to be a man under his order? Don't you want to be under his division? For those of you who already have uh, a relationship with Christ Jesus, uh, let us not end up as Adam and Eve. Uh, many people say, well, is there any way that I can lose my salvation? Is there any way that I can lose uh, my relationship? Well, brothers and sisters, the Bible says nothing, uh, nothing in heaven or earth can strip us from Christ Jesus. But he wants us to know there are things we can do uh, that can contribute to a diminishing relationship. Adam and Eve were cast out of the garden. They were not cast out of God's love. Uh, Samson lost control in terms of his power, brothers and sisters. But as you see, he still maintained a small relationship with the Lord to call upon him one last time uh, to get vengeance, brothers and sisters, for his eyes that were taken. Uh, even though King David, brothers and sisters, made a mistake, he, he didn't lose his crown. He was still the king of Israel, although a bit of his control over his own household was diminished. A bit of his kingdom, brothers and sisters, was siphoned out. So falling, brothers and sisters, and making mistakes does not mean we lose our salvation. However, it does mean we may lose some sort of access. Uh, we may not feel the same any for you, anymore. You may be in a weakened condition. And remember, when you are in a weakened condition, that's when the enemy loves to strike. But the Lord is here in his word, brothers and sisters, to reestablish to us. Just as he is going to do with the earth, he has done already inside of us. He wants us, brothers and sisters, to maintain dominion and control over our bodies. He wants us to domain, uh, dominion and control over our households. But we're not going to be able to do it based on power that we think we have as a man or the power that you think you have as a woman or as a Democrat or a Republican or your race or your culture. That has no power, brothers and sisters. The only true lasting power is the power of the Holy Spirit. He is here, brothers and sisters, to continue to be our teacher, our comforter, and our savior. 
So thank you all for joining me for the word of God today. I pray safety and security over each and every single one of you. Uh, thank you all. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for this word. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this message on the seven trumpets of Revelation. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we continue to read, to research, and to be fed by your Holy Spirit as we enact the things that you have given us uh, for your will and your glory. Help us, Heavenly Father. Help us to continue to keep uh, dominion and control in our lives and not let us sublease anything else out to the enemy. For we know the enemy, Heavenly Father, has already taken a lot, has already taken everything from some people. But we are here today in the name of Jesus Christ to decree and declare that we are more than conquerors and that we know that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard the things that you have in store for all of us. Bless your holy name today. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, please continue to join us here at Revelational Ministries throughout the week uh, on Tuesday evenings at 8 p.m. for intercessory prayer, Thursday evenings at 8 p.m. for Bible study, and Sunday mornings at 7 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. for the Word of God. Please follow us on Facebook and YouTube for additional biblical and Word of God content. I am Minister John Pickens with Revelational Ministries, and I would like to thank each and every single one of you for logging in today and joining us for the Word of God. All of you have a safe and blessed weekend. Amen.